Welcome to our lecture online and our next two examples. We have to determine if they're properly constrained, if they're in equilibrium, and if we can determine all of the forces involved in the situation. So let's say right here our first one of the two. Here this is on rollers, this is connected right here. So what we can say is that the only force acting here would be in this direction. That would be the force at C. Here we'll have two forces, one like this at C and most likely one like this that would be force at A and then we have force at B which will be at an angle 45 degree angle this would be force at B and it'll be a vertical component force at B in the Y direction and a horizontal component force at B in the X direction and that will be most likely the directions of these forces let's just find the magnitude of the forces and first of all let's determine if it's completely constrained so you can see that uh, there cannot be any motion in this direction and there cannot be any motion in this direction because it's held right here and it's held right there. So this is completely constrained and it's fully in equilibrium. So it's constrained and in equilibrium. All right. Now, finding all the forces. Let's see here. Let's see if we can determine all the forces. Um, hmm. So it looks like we're not going to be able to determine all of the forces. The problem is we have the 1,000 Newton force act in the down direction, and we have three forces. The force at C, oh, this should be the force at A in the vertical direction. So let me write that down. The force at A in the Y direction. We have the force at A in the X direction. And so you can see that the three forces compensating for the 1,000 Newton force, one, two, and three, and it's going to be virtually impossible, or actually it's going to be impossible to determine all three of the forces. What we can do, however, is since there's only a tension force, uh, let's see here, hmm, I wouldn't even say that. What we could do is we can say we have a moment right here, we have a force going this way, a force being compensated for in that direction, and there's no other forces here that are acting in, yes, there is a force acting. So again, like I said, there's a lot of possibilities and it's not, a, you're not able to determine the forces. So what we're gonna to have to write is indetermined. When it comes to trying to find all the forces, it's just not possible in this case. There's too many unknowns, not enough uh, known quantities, not enough equations that we can make up to find all the unknowns. Let's go over to this side right here and see if this is properly constrained and the answer is it looks like it is and the reason for that is because we have this force right here which causes the whole thing to rotate in this direction but over here we notice that we can have a force in this direction so let's say this is point A, this is point B, this is point C so we can have a force at point B in the X direction and we can have a force at point B in the Y direction. Over here, we can also have a force at point A in the, in the X in the Y direction, force at A in the Y direction, and we can have a force at A in the X direction. So notice we have two, four forces, and not enough understood here to be able to make a determination what those forces are. However, it is not going to rotate because this force will take care of the rotational motion compensated for by this force right here. So we can say that the sum of the moments do add up to zero. So we know that they are constrained and in equilibrium. But then try to determine all the forces. Notice that we have two forces that can compensate for the thousand Newton force here. And there's no way to, to know how, what, how the force will be distributed between those two. So therefore, we cannot determine those. We could determine this force right here because that has to compensate for this force right here. So what we could say is that, this, that the moment about point A is equal to zero. So that will be equal to minus 1,000 newtons times the moment arm of a half a meter and then we have the force B at X, which causes a clockwise, a counterclockwise direction. So it would be plus the force B at X, and I'll just call it the magnitude of that force times one meter. So from this, we could say that the force at B in the X direction must equal 500 newtons. So this one can.
can be determined, but we cannot determine the force that be in the y direction or the force that ain't in the y direction. Of course, we can also determine force A in the x direction because it'll be equal in magnitude to the force at B in the x direction. So we can say that the force at A in the x direction also must equal 500 newtons, but we cannot determine the two vertical components, which must add up to the 1,000 newtons. So that is how we at least can partially determine some of the information on these two examples. And that's how it's done.